Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I want to show you how you can take two different t-shirts and join them together to make a raglan sleeve t-shirt like the one I'm wearing. I made this from two solid color t-shirts, but I also like to do the same style with two t-shirts that both have graphics on it. You end up with one graphic on the front and one on a shoulder, which is kind of cool. So let me show you how I do that. So all you're going to need are your two t-shirts and they can be extra large. I shopped in the thrift store in the men's extra large section. So they can be big, but then you need one kind of long sleeve or three quarter length t-shirt. doesn't have to be raglan sleeve though, any long sleeve t-shirt that does fit you, one that you like the fit of. And we're not cutting this one up, we're just using that to trace, but we're going to cut up the other two. One thing to just check on is that the amount of stretch of all your t-shirts is similar. If you have a pattern for a raglan sleeve t-shirt, you can use that here. It does make it a little bit easier, but I'm going to show you a way to make this raglan sleeve t-shirt with no pattern at all. We're just going to be cutting into the first t-shirt and using what we cut off as the pattern for the sleeve. Make sense? So another thing I'm going to play around with on this project is using a double needle. The double needle gives you a beautiful top stitch because not only are your two rows of top stitching parallel, but the stitches all line up. So I'm going to do that along the seam of the shirt and around the neck, and I'm going to do the bottom hem with it. So what that does is that it also gives a zigzag on the back. So that means it's going to kind of finish the edges for me. So I'm going to do this whole project as if I didn't have a serger. So of course a serger is optional, uh, and also using a raglan sleeve pattern is optional. But for this video, I'm going to show you how to get by without either one, and it's kind of fun. So I'm glad you're along for the ride. Let's jump right in. So the first thing I have to decide is if I want to have the black body with red sleeves, kind of like that, or do I want to have a red body with black sleeves? I've never been to Hong Kong, but I'm sure I would love it if I did go. So I kind of, I think I'm going to go with the black body with red sleeves. If the neckband looks like it's been kind of stretched out and tired, I actually kind of like that because I'm going to be dropping the neck just that little bit for comfort. So that neckband is going to end up looking okay if it's stretched out here it's going to be perfect here first thing i have to do is unpick this neckband but i'm going to unpick that whole neck and it's not that hard to unpick it first of all it's it's sewn twice right it's surged on and then it's cover seamed on so i'm going to go in with little scissors and just cut all of those stitches all the way around once you cut through all those stitches on the back, then the front cover seaming just pulls out pretty easily. And then once you get the cover stitching removed, then the surging around the neckline can come out easily. You'll just cut off the very, very edge, like where the threads loop together. And then you're just going to pull out the two needle threads. So I've unpicked both neckbands. I really only need one, but I thought I would unpick both just to save for possibly a project in the future. I'm going with the black body red sleeves, so I'm going to be starting with the black. So anytime we're working with a symmetrical garment, you want to start with the garment folded in half, nice and even. I want to make sure the graphic is folded in half evenly and that the shirt's smooth. If that side seam comes a little bit forward, that's just because a t-shirt that's been worn quite a lot and washed quite a lot, it's going to start to twist. And so you'll have that seam coming forward. Hopefully it's not going to come into the body where I need it, but it's more important to me that the t-shirt is laying smooth here. And I'm going to take my t-shirt that fits me, also folded neatly in half, lined up nicely, and it just barely makes it on there. Perfect. The center front edges are all lined up nicely together. And then here's a bit of a tricky bit. You want to bring the top of your sleeves to the top of the sleeves of the t-shirt. The t-shirt that we're going to be cutting is going to be bunched up under the arm here. It just has to be that way for now. We're going to be cutting away here, but we just need to bunch that up under the arm to be able to line up the top edge of the sleeve. It bothers me that I can't get that smooth. It does work out, I promise. So that's just going to bunch up there. Now tracing. My favorite is wax. You can also sometimes on, on some fabrics these chalk squares work well. I do kind of like this clover pen. It makes a decent line too. I do like that. That maybe is the way to go for this fabric. So I'm going to be tracing out. Now this one has a shirt tail. 
I'm going to follow about a finger width away from that edge so that I have enough to hem it. Now, if your t-shirt is straight and doesn't have a shirt tail, if you ever want to add it, you're going to make sure you've got a right angle there at the side seam and then come down two or three inches from the bottom of your shirt and a right angle there as well. You need right angle at both and then this gentle curve in between. Up on the side seam here, I'm just going to trace out about a pinky finger width out from the side seam here. And I'm kind of limited by that seam coming in, so that'll be fine right there. Good. Up under the arm here where it's all bunched up, I'm still just going to be tracing that little pinky finger width away from my sleeve, just like that. Okay, so even though this is bunchy, I can still trace a good line there. Now peeking under at the neckline here, the neckline of this t-shirt, once I sew the neckband back onto it, it's going to be about the same as the t-shirt that I like. But if I wanted to, in fact maybe I will, still drop it down a little bit more just because I do like that for comfort. And I will be able to get the original neckband to stretch that little bit extra, no problem. Okay, so I've got all the information I need from this one. So with the good t-shirt out of the way now, I'm going to cut right on that line. I'm not going to cut the neck here because I have to get the back neck out of the way. Okay, that's pretty good. Next, I just want to draw my line for the raglan. So under the arm here, I want to come in. Mm, I'm going to come in right to the point of that seam. I'll come in right there and kind of flat. I don't want to come in on a steep angle there, kind of flat. Good. And then maybe, let's say two, two and a half inches down from the neck, I want to just draw a nice smooth line to connect there. That's it. That's pretty easy to draw. And then I'm going to continue that right through to the back. Yeah, I'm about two and a half inches down from the shoulder is where it's crossing here. And about two inches in is where it's touching the back neck. And it's pretty straight. It does have a bit of an arch to it, but if you wanted to do it, you could just do it totally straight, couldn't you? That would be fine. And then level off coming out to the where the side seam and the sleeve meet there. Easy peasy. I'll cut on that line through all the layers, even through the back. Good. Now I'm going to take the back out of the way so that I can cut down that front neck a little bit. Okay, good. So there is my front and back. It's cute. Okay. This is the piece that is now going to become my pattern for the sleeve. So this is what I just cut off. And now I just want to talk about this little extra bit. This is the fullness that accommodates your shoulder. Okay, so let's look at the blue ones that I cut off the one that I'm wearing now. So I don't want to just use this as a flat piece. I have square shoulders and so I need that extra space. If you have more rounded shoulders or narrow shoulders, maybe you're okay to just use this as it is, just kind of use it flat like that. But for me, I don't want to lose that fullness. So I'm going to show you two ways. One is I'm going to cut right into that shoulder seam. Have you ever seen a raglan sleeve pattern that has a dart in the, in the shoulder seam there? Sometimes the patterns will be like this where there's a dart here. And that's exactly what it's for. And then you'd sew that dart closed. That's what allows you to maintain the, that extra space for the shoulder. But I never really love that too much. I don't really love to see a dart in the shoulder seam because it always ends up with a funny bubble right there, doesn't it? What I did with the blue one, is instead of cutting into the shoulder, I cut along both seams up, oh, what is that, about a third, a third of the way on each side, right? Um, so I cut about a third of the way in, left a third of it together, and then it's able to lay flat without losing the fullness for the shoulder. So I just cut right in there, it can flatten out. Now these, I'm not gonna sew as darts. I'm gonna just leave that as extra fullness kind of under the arm and that works out just great. And I don't have to have darts there. So hopefully that visual is a good way to help you to understand the purpose of darts, how they do help create shape. So I'm gonna cut in along the seam here. Yeah, a 
about a third of the way there and a third of the way on the other side. And then that's able to lay reasonably flat. Okay, now one other thing about raglan sleeves is that they, they shouldn't, they should not just curve down like this. I'm gonna be cutting in a little bit of a wing there. Just the same way the armhole flattens out, I'm gonna flatten that out as well. Now, the t-shirt that I'm gonna use for the sleeves. This one I don't wanna fold in half because my sleeve piece is not symmetrical. So again, I wanna make sure it's just smooth, that there's no folds or bubbles. Nice and smooth, but not in half. And I will take my chopped up sleeve piece here. I have to move it down so that I'm not losing that point. That's the back neck. Good. So getting it nice and flat there, I'm gonna just draw out my little wings here. Just flatten that out a little bit and then connect to here. So if I place the neck edge of my original t-shirt at the top of the neck here, I won't be able to make this sleeve quite as long, but look, I'll be able to come down and use that original hem. How about that? I've got both my sleeves of my original shirt laying here. So I could taper that in to be a little bit more slim at the wrist. When I sew these back together, I'm gonna to use just a quarter inch seam allowance. So I need a half inch seam allowance on these two edges. So about half inch finger width away. So if I'm sewing it at a quarter inch, I need a quarter inch both sides, right? So this one has to have a half inch added to accommodate from the other one. So I'm adding all the seam allowance here. It'll work out, don't worry. So this is the sleeve then. The side of the neckline that's higher is the back. The side that's lower is the front. So for our first sewing step, I'm gonna take the two front edges and put them right side together with the front edges of the front. You might have a little bit of easing in there to do, and that's just fine. That's just gonna be perfect. So let's talk about needles for a second on a knit project. It's better to use a ball point or sometimes they're called jersey needles. For the top stitching, especially if you don't have a serger, the double needle is a nice way to top stitch your edges because on the back, it leaves a zigzag. And so it kind of top stitches and finishes at the same time. You can get ball point or jersey double needles. Good, so I have my ball point needle in. I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance, which means I'm gonna run the edge of my presser foot along the raw edges here. You can pin that all together, but I'm just gonna match up my two bottom corners and then find a middle spot and hold that together. I wanna bring my edges together and be right sides together, starting with a little backpack. To be honest, I would normally just serge this right together, but I am gonna just try this as if I didn't have a serger. Diagonal edge of the other sleeve going to the, going to the other diagonal edge of the front. And I am just using a regular straight stitch but I am stretching a little bit as I go so that it can still stretch when I've got it on. So the front edges are connected now and I love it already. I love how the graphics kind of interplay. I just love it. So now same thing, attaching the back to the two back diagonals. So I just grab the two lower corners and then I find the center point. And then that's what I just hold as I go and making sure my edges are always together. If the bottom edge pokes out, that doesn't bother me so much as if I can't see the bottom edge because then I don't know if I'm missing it entirely. So now they're all together in this big circular shape. So there's the front, the two sleeves, and then the back, there's even a graphic on the back as well. Right now what I'm gonna do is go in with a double needle. I'm gonna push the seam allowance toward the body. So I'm gonna go in with a double needle and top stitch all four seams with the seam allowance going toward the body. How to thread for a double needle? You'll need two threads on top. So I just use my regular cone thread that I use for everything and an extra bobbin. 
I want the top stitching to stand out, so I'll use red. A lot of machines have an extra little stick here for a second spool. If you're using two small spools, that's what you would use. So now I've got two threads together and I'm gonna put them through the machine as if they're one, just like normal threading, but I'm holding two threads. On some machines, there are two thread guides here and we normally use the left one. If you have two thread guides, this is where you're gonna divide your two threads. One thread will go through the left guide, one will go through the right. I just have one guide on this machine. So that's just gonna go right behind there. And now I'm going to divide the threads and thread the two needles. One thing that I find that makes it easier is using the tweezers from my serger. It just somehow makes it a little bit easier to just get that thread into the needle. Can you see the opening here on my zigzag foot, the right side of the opening, or this little seam where the clear part meets the silver? That line right there is what I'm going to run along the seam to be nice and straight. That's where my eye is gonna stay as I'm sewing. I've got the seam allowance pushed toward the body. So there's the double needle top stitching and it's just beautiful because it's not only two parallel lines of stitching, but also the stitches are lined up. So visually, it's just really, really perfect and beautiful. So it is worth playing around with and getting that working on your machine. Now, mine kept wanting to get stuck right at the beginning is getting pulled into the machine and driving me a little bit crazy so here's a little trick just take a little bit of scrap fabric tuck it in behind down maybe like half an inch or three quarters at the most and just start without those with that underneath your layers Having that little scrap fabric there does two things. It gives the machine more to grab onto, so it's gonna move it along and not do a bunch of stitches all in one place. And after it's done at least a couple stitches, it gives me a chance I can grab onto that and pull it along if I need to. If it does a bunch of stitches in one place, just hit, lift your needle up, move it along just a smidge. And then that just helps the machine get, get going. And after that, it should be fine. Pushing your seam allowance out toward the body. On the back, you've got the zigzag, which can serve as your seam finishing. That little bit of extra fabric that I attached in there to give myself that little boost at the beginning, I can now just cut away all of the extra. So all four seams have the double needle top stitch now, and I just love it. I just love it. So that looks great. So now I'm gonna put it all right sides together. So now with it right sides together, I'm going to match up these seams. I'm gonna pin there first. So I really want those to match up perfectly. If I'm using the original hem or the t-shirt, as the hem on the sleeve, then I definitely need that to line up perfectly as well. You want to pin all your matching points first and then pin in between. I'm going to sew it with a straight stitch as long as I stretch a little bit as I go just so it does have that ease of movement. And then I am going to zigzag my edges. So if you have a serger, you don't have to sew this first and then serge. You can just serge. Remembering to stretch a bit as I go. I'm happy with the fit. I'm going to go with a zigzag now right along the edge. I'm actually almost done. I just have to put on the neckband and hem the bottom edge. For attaching the neckband, I want to show you what I call quarter marking, but I kind of messed up the filming of it, so I'm refilming it with a completely different shirt. So that's why the shirt is just changing color for a minute here. I'm taking the neckband and folding it in half. There's the seam and folding it in half and putting a pin exactly opposite the seam. So you can think of that as being north and south. Then I put north and south together and put a pin at east and west, right? So that's divided into four equal sections, good? Okay, and then with the shirt, which has now magically turned to orange, I wanna quarter mark that as well. So 
On this shirt, it just has the single shoulder seam. I'm bringing that together to find north and south. But you, on the, on the raglan sleeve shirt, you've got two shoulder seams. So you'd bring those both together. Find your center back, that's north. Put a pin there. Find center front, that's south. Put a pin there. And the pins just go in flat, right? The fabric can still open up. I'm not pinning in a fold there or anything. Bring north and south together and put a pin at east and west. So then I like to put the seam at the center back. Some people put it at one of the raglan seams, but I just find it easier to for the quarter marking to have the seam at the center back. What I've got here is the shirt is inside out, all three raw edges are together. The neck band is inside. So that's how you get it right sides together. It's not really instinctive. A lot of beginners put it upside down, wrong way around. So just keep that in mind. Shirt is inside out, all three raw edges together. North to north, south to south, east to east, and west to west. Now each section needs to stretch a little bit because remember on this shirt as well, I'm just making the neckline a little bit deeper. And so you're just pinning in between each section now. So just stretch, grab the centers, always keeping your edges together. Okay, so there, I've got it pinned together all the way around, kind of with that fullness evenly distributed. And I just check it, like if it looks like one section like this just has more than another section, just redistribute that. Okay, you want it looking even. And I'm switching back to just a straight stitch, but again, I'm gonna be stretching this out. If I don't sew it in a stretch position, when I go to put it on, that thread is really gonna break. And I'm using the edge of my presser foot as a guide. Make sure it stays where you pinned it, otherwise you'll end up with all that extra fullness all in one spot, making a big pleat. Check it over for any yucky little puckers like that. I really don't like that. So if you get any little puckers, all it is is a matter of unpicking, like you might have to unpick maybe half an inch. Okay, so maybe that turned into two inches of unpicking, but it's still totally worth doing. Don't let little puckers get away with it. Instead of zigzagging my edges now, I'm gonna switch back to the double needle and I'm just gonna double needle top stitch around the neckline, um, which is gonna look beautiful and it's gonna finish my edges for me. So I want the seam allowance facing down toward the body. I'm going to start at the center back just so my back tack is a little bit more discreet. Again, I'm lining up this seam with the right hand side of the opening or where the clear meets the silver on my presser foot. Go slowly over where your seams come into the neckline because it is a bit thick there and it is easy to break a double needle and they're expensive. So the double needle top stitching just looks beautiful around the neck. And now all we have left to do is hem the bottom edge. If you've done a straight edge, you want to turn up about three centimeters or an inch and a quarter. But on a shirt tail, we can't turn up that much around a curve. It just makes it all terrible. So on a shirt tail, we just want to turn up pinky finger width, one centimeter. Okay, so we're going to be pressing that up all the way around. I'm going to hem this with the double needle, which is going to look fantastic. But the tricky thing about that is that with a double needle, you have to be working on the outside because remember the inside is going to be that zigzag. So we have to be working where we cannot see this edge, but you're going to be able to feel it. So we do want to press it first so that it's all nice and organized. Lots of heat, lots of steam. And in fact, while I've got it in that position, I'm going to put a few pins while it just cools off here a little bit. Okay, so at the side seam, this is where the shirt tail kind of has to spread around a little bit more. So make the nice shape, press it, and then blend down into the curves at the center, at the front and back. Make a nice shape and then press. So if you've seen my videos, you know that I don't always pin everything, but on something like this, where I'm going to be working from the other side where I can't even see this edge, I definitely want to put some pins. So I am going to be working this side up, the good side up where I cannot see the cut edge. So to know where to put my folded edge, I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to line it up this way. 
and then see where my edge lands. So I know I'm safe if my folded edge just is right at the edge of my presser foot. I'll be safe. I won't miss the cut edge. And after you've sewn a few inches, just flip to the back and make sure it is working out. You are catching your cut edge there. If you're doing a straight hem and you're folding up three centimeters or an inch and a quarter, then your guideline might be might be the 20 line or three quarters of an inch. Okay, trim threads, give that hem a final press and we are done. Okay, so here's the finished product and I just love it. I think it's my favorite new t-shirt. It's super comfy and soft. Um, and I just, I love the way the graphic looks when you kind of cut into it. I like it. That was a pretty fun, fast and easy project. I hope you enjoyed doing that. If you do make one, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to hear from you. And if you liked today's video, you know what you gotta do. You gotta hit that subscribe button and click the bell too so that you get my new videos when they come out. Thanks so much, you take care.